Hi, welcome to Pollen Morphology Training Part 5, Additional Information. Today, we are going to provide some additional information that may help you further identify an unknown pollen grain. Let's discuss the following. Detailed reticulate information. Saccate morphology. Sulcus and ulcus aperture types. Transverse colpus. Compound apertures. Aperture membrane ornamentation. Clypeate grains and detailed tetrad and polyad information. Reticulate information. Reticulum is composed of muri, which are a network of ridges that create depressions that are known as lumina. Homogeneity of the reticulum. Homobrocate grains have a reticulum that is uniform in size. Heterobrocate grains have a reticulum that has a variation in size, which may be gradual or random throughout the surface of the grain. Reticulum size distribution. The size distribution of the reticulum may vary across the surface of the grain. The reticulate may be considered even, smaller toward pole, larger near pole, larger near aperture, or smaller toward aperture. Here is an example of a grain with even reticulum. Here is an example of a grain where the reticulum gets smaller towards the pole. Here is an example of a grain where the reticulum gets larger near the pole. Here is an example of a grain where the reticulum gets larger near the aperture. Here is an example of a grain where the reticulum gets smaller towards the aperture. Reticulum cristatum is a special type of reticulum that has prominent sculpturing elements present on the muri. If present, this description may be included in the notes section of the database. Here is an example. Now let's talk about saccate morphology. A saccus is an air sac protruding from the body of a saccate grain. The number of sacs may vary from one to three. The corpus is the main body of a saccate grain. The leptoma is a thinning at the distal pole of a saccate grain, and it is believed to function as the aperture. Now let's discuss some additional information regarding apertures. A sulcus is an ecto-aperture that is similar to a colpus, but it differs in its orientation. It is commonly found on monocot grains. For our purposes, it would be described as a colpus in the database. An ulcus, also referred to as ulcerate, is a thinning of the exine that appears similar to a pore, but may be irregular in shape. For our purposes, it would be described as a pore in the database. It may also be described in the notes section of the database. Here is an example. A transverse colpus is a ring-shaped endoaperture that is continuous around the equator of the grain. For our purposes, it would be described as zonerate in the database. A compound aperture is composed of overlaying apertures occurring in different layers of the wall. This would be described in the notes section of the database. Here are a few examples. Aperture membrane ornamentation is the exine layer covering the aperture that has a noticeably distinct ornamentation. 
Typically, there is a different pattern on the aperture than on the surface of the grain. Here are a few examples. Clypeat is a type of ornamentation with the exine divided into shield-like areas. This characteristic would be described in the notes section of the database. Here are a few examples. Additional tetrad information. Tetrad grains have unique dispersal arrangements as shown in the cartoons above. When morphologically describing a tetrad, we base the morphology type and aperture description on a single cell, while the rest of the description is based on the tetrad formation. Here are a few examples. Take a moment to watch these Z-Stack videos. The morphological type of this grain is considered to be triporate because each of the individual cells contain three pores. Aside from the description of the pores, the remaining morphological characteristics, such as polar and equatorial shape, would be based on the overall grain in its tetrad formation. Additional polyad information. As previously discussed, polyad grains have multiple cells and the number of cells per grain may vary. This varying cell count can help the user narrow down the options for pollen grain identification. Here is an example. Take a moment to watch these Z-Stack videos. In this example, try to count or estimate the number of cells present. As you can see in the videos, this example has 16 cells. If you are unsure of the number of cells, try to observe the grain in both polar and equatorial orientations in order to gain a better understanding of the cell placement, which can help ensure an accurate cell count. Thanks for joining us! We hope you enjoyed the final installment of the Pollen Morphology Training Series. This concludes our Pollen Morphology Training Series.